What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we are going to check out this 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. Or some people call it Broham. I used to call it Broham, but then I got yelled at by everybody for calling it Broham. So, Brougham. It's got relatively low miles, if I remember correctly. It's something like 80,000 miles on the odometer. It's a fairly nice looking car. And I got it for 4,500 bucks, which in my opinion is pretty cheap. It's not perfect, nothing here ever is, but I think this was a good deal. All right, let's check her out. We got a nice little key fob here. And I don't know what these buttons do. It says lights. No, that doesn't seem to do anything. Let's push the trunk button. That too doesn't do anything. Okay, well, I guess we've got two other buttons. Now that works. So it looks like the lock and the unlock function like they're supposed to. Let's open up these doors. There's that brome. It smells so good in this car. I don't know who did what to it, but it's, it's actually a pretty nice place to be. This is a big car, really, really big car. And I've kind of always wanted one, although, if we're being honest, I'm a little more partial to the, uh, to the older ones. This flips back, and then when you uh, take your key out, you just pop it back over. Look how massive the trunk is in this car. Absolutely insane. You got your license plate right here, and down there is your, your fuel. Are you seeing what I see? It is nasty under here, moldy, mildewy. Looks like it's been sitting for a long, long time. In here, you got this little lever. When you pull it, you can't get to the gas cap. Pretty slick, huh? I'm gonna tell you right now, I love, love this car. Soft closed trunk. It should pull itself down. It should pull itself down. It should pull. <laughs> okay. Don't do me like that. <laughs> Isn't that the way cars go? They'll act right until you're either trying to show them off or you're trying to sell them. And then they start acting kind of foolish. I don't know what's going on under here, but my guess is it's got something to do with this. Let's try it one more time. Maybe it just needs a good no okay so looks like we found the first problem that i get to that i get to work on is figuring out why the trunk doesn't want to uh soft close it's supposed to pull itself down and i have opened the trunk about 20 times and it has worked every single time except for when i try to put it on video one of the things that's missing on this car is white wall tires it just doesn't it doesn't look right. Now it looks like somebody just put these tires on. So what I'm thinking is this car probably sat for a very long time, probably belonged to an older person. They drove it rarely and you know, either they quit driving, they passed away, something happened and the car ended up sitting for many, many years would be my guess. Um, <sighs> yeah, these are like new tires. These tires are like brand new, they're matching. They're all Kumos. Looks like they're low on tire pressure though. Let's see if we can find a date code on these. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. The tires are from 2014. Yeah, they're almost a decade old. So someone put these tires on it in 2014. I'm seeing a theme here. I, it really is starting to look like this car just sat parked somewhere for a long time. There's a little damage here to the seat. So what this is, it's not, there is a little damage to the seat there, nothing, nothing major, but I would like to replace this piece. It broke right here. And because of that, it doesn't hold, ugh, I can't get it back on, but it doesn't hold this to the seat anymore. So if I could find one of those, that would be nice. Also fuse box cover is missing and something, I guess this is just from the heat sitting out in the sun. It melted the defroster vent for over here. It's not perfect. I told you it wasn't. The dashboard is relatively good though. I mean, 
most of the stuff in here looks really, really good. There is a crack way back there on the dash. And here's an oil change sticker. Next service due April of 2015. Interesting, that's one year after the tires were installed at a mileage of 84,480. Well, I'm curious to see what the miles are now. Fires right up. Radio comes to life. I hear the power antenna working. She's got 81,372 miles. 81,372, 84,480. That means right after the oil was changed, this car had to have been parked. And that was in 2015. That's eight years. Eight years this thing has been parked. <laughs> this door needs lubed up a little bit. Important window works. A lesser important window works. Oh, you hear how stuck that was? And what about this one? That was that was kind of stuck too. You can oh you can hear they're they're a little crispy. They've been there for a while. What do we got in here? We got an original. We got an original 96 maintenance book. I wonder if there's any maintenance. Well, nobody ever used these, so I really would not be surprised if this has nothing in it at all. No. Attach coupon to work order. No. So, it's there. It's just never been used. That doesn't work either. Remote trunk release. You should at least hear it pop. You got your dual cigarette uh, ashtrays. And you can tell they have never been used. There's gum wrappers in them. And that is it. Okay. Maybe they've been used once or twice. Let's listen to this LT1 engine. And we'll pull the hood release. Yeah, that door's a little... These tires need some air, I think. Those suckers look really, really low. I'll have to break out the air compressor. And this thing is, it's a big car, real big car. So again, this is a 1996 and it has that 5.7 liter Corvette LT1. It is detuned. It's not as powerful. I think this is like 280 horsepower. I'm sure the torque number is through the roof, probably around 340, something like that, 350. You've got a nice little battery with that glowing sight glass there. Those are the old AC Delco batteries. And the battery's dated 11 of 21, so right around 2022. So just a hair over a year old on the battery. So somebody ended up getting this car uh, somewhere along the line, and they at least changed the battery. I'm sure they had to do some fuel system work. And then it ended up at auction. Uh, I see these at auction, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, I I don't understand it, but I see these things at a lot of these auctions, and people are asking. Okay, you're gonna be. There we go. Good lord, I think she needs to be used a little bit, guys. <laughs> it's just been a while since this thing's been used. The vinyl top looks to be in good shape. The seams are all good and everything. It could use a touch-up on the paint, maybe. I don't know how you do that, some kind of vinyl paint. But I see people asking at auction $9,000 for these things. Personally, I don't, I, I, I don't see it. I don't... No, I couldn't do it. But for $4,500, I figured it, was a, it wasn't a bad deal. You know the body's in good shape, the chrome. It's got so much chrome. <laughs> And the chrome looks nice. It is a flashy, sharp-looking old car. And I wouldn't be embarrassed to drive this thing all day, every day. Honest God, exactly the way it is, with the exception of putting some white walls on it. I'd have to throw some white wall tires on it. Aside from that, though, I'd drive living hell out of it. So, speaking of driving, why don't I air these tires up real quick? And then why don't we take it out for a spin? All right, guys, let's take her for a spin. The back tires are not the same as the front. The front are the Kumos Solus and the rears are something else. The rear tires are from 2002. Yeah, the day code is 
2002 on the rear tires, so, and they've got perfect tread. So, yeah, it's it's been a while, guys. I'm surprised she runs this well. Somebody had to have gotten a hold of it and gotten her running again, because there's no way. There's no way that she was running properly, at least, after sitting for as long as she did. So we're going to take her out on a little road trip, take her for about 10 miles, and let's see how she does. All right, pleasant surprise. I turn on the air conditioning, and she's ice cold. I did not expect that. That trunk, unfortunately, is still kind of hanging open there. There's not really anything I can do about that right now. All I can tell you is the dang thing worked, and now it doesn't. You know, that's how cars go. All right, I don't see anything that has leaked on the ground from where the car has been sitting. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, these things ride so good, guys. Wow. I am... I'm pleasantly surprised. I really am. She rides like a dream. We're going to try the cruise control out here in just a second. Speed limit's going to go up to 65. All right, 55. Let's see how it handles these curves. Not bad. Not bad at all. I expected there to be a lot of body roll, but very nice. Okay, here we go. 65. I'll set the cruise. Let's see if it works. There should be a light somewhere that'll say cruise. There it is, down here at the bottom, cruise engaged. And will she hold her own? Yes, she will. Yeah, cruise is engaged and it's holding. This is, okay, so, no, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say it. I'll say it. I was airing up the tires and I was thinking, you know, Maybe I should keep this car. And then I decided, Randy, you got to stop, man. We're not in the business of buying and keeping cars. There's a few cars that I would like to keep and hold on to. This one, I wouldn't mind holding on to it. I just, I don't really see the value going up. And I don't see myself really utilizing the car at all. In fact, I don't see myself utilizing any of the cars that I have currently, aside from my new truck maybe Jessica's Mustang, and that's pretty much it for now. A big Bertha of a car like this, even though it'll surprise you, she gets good fuel economy. These things are supposed to get about 26 miles a gallon, if I remember correctly, on the highway. Overdrive works great, it just kicked in because we're going up a hill. Horn? Wow, that's, that's a horn. Yeah, this is a nice place to be. Especially for something that's 1996. Mechanically, great running, driving, shifting car. Steering feels wonderful as well. I'm surprised it's riding so good on such old tires. I would highly recommend tires on this. And if I might add my, my recommendation, white walls. Cadillac's got to have white walls, man. Um, if I were to put tires on this, I guarantee you I would put some white walls on this bad boy. We're doing 66 miles an hour. She's not shaking or vibrating. She's running perfectly smooth. And I really enjoy the ride. It's it's a nice... I sure wish I could keep everything. I really do. Uh, unfortunately, that's just not the way it works. Um, being that that remote or that, that trunk thingy was working the other day, the pull-down... I'm going to bet maybe the motor is giving out on it or something. So probably going to need a motor. Thankfully, it still closes. Uh, but I'd bet a, a, just a cheap used eBay trunk motor would probably solve that problem. So when I get home tonight, I'll do a little look, looking around, see if I can find one. And if I can, well, we'll probably just go ahead and replace it. If I can't, I mean, how much could something like that really be? AC feels really nice. I'm wearing a heavy jacket today and... This car does not have any tint on the windows, so the car is relatively warm and that air conditioning is keeping me nice and cool. Another big shock to me is the lack of noise. Let me let me shut my mouth for a minute and just listen to the ride.
All right, this is not a good road. This is a really bumpy road. And I don't hear anything rattling around. And I'm sorry, GMs, Fords, most of American cars from this generation and quite a few prior generations, they would squeak and rattle the minute you drove them off the showroom floor. And God knows after 20, 20 or 30 years, things started getting real bad. But not this. This one is just smooth as silk and nice and quiet. We made it halfway, although I'm not surprised. I didn't tell you guys this, but I drove this like 30 miles yesterday. To the city and back. Um, Oh yeah, trans is strong. Okay, I like this. No, I don't, I will, I'm not going to fall for another damn car. I'm not going to. We'll set the cruise again. Um, anyway, I drove this car something like 30 miles, 35 miles yesterday. Um, I had a trailer attached to my truck and I didn't want to drag the trailer all the way down to go get some dinner. And I didn't want to drop the trailer just to go down to get some dinner. So I looked at this. We had Nick and we needed a car that had more than two seats. So I saw this and I was like, screw it, man. Let's take the Fleetwood. So I already knew that it was going to ride and drive just fine. And I'm still surprised. Like this is just now, this is my second time driving it. And I'm really surprised the steering wheel is I got to try to stay straight on the road here the car is not veering off the road but these roads suck but like natural position she sits relatively straight right there very nice she cruises straight down the road everything sounds healthy on this I think this was a great deal guys I really do 4,500 bucks relatively low miles under 100,000 good Carfax report not a salvage title or anything like that these things are these things are absolute beasts. I don't know. Comment below and tell me what you think of the '96 Brougham. Remember, this is the very last year these were produced. It was this car and the Buick Roadmaster. Um, yeah, and that would be it because the Chevy Caprice was discontinued. So all you had was Buick and Cadillac. These are the last of the American-made land yachts, man. The big V8 front uh, <laughs> V8 rear wheel drive i'm so used to saying front wheel drive v8 rear wheel drive engines man even the seville i've got it's a 4.5 v8 but it's front wheel drive this is the last big bertha that's kind of special really i don't know if i were to sell it this one i would absolutely have to sell for a profit i i absolutely refuse to lose money on this particular car this is far too nice to just give away for nothing so uh i don't know you guys will comment below i'm sure what do you think an old car like this is worth i'm sure there's not a huge market for it this isn't something everybody's looking for but there's got to be a few people out there that see something like this and they're like man that car is worth a few dollars so comment below tell me what you think it's worth we're going to get back to the house and then we'll take one last look at this bad boy before we call it a day. Well, we made it back, safe and sound. Isn't there just something about the front end on this car? It's a beautiful, beautiful car, man. Yeah, I think I am gonna go ahead and let it go. I really, I can't keep everything. And the more I think about this car, the more I think how long this thing has been sitting, you know, even if it's been, if, even if it's only been seven or eight years, she's been sitting a long time. This thing needs to be on the road. Somebody needs to be driving. There's got to be somebody out there that will see the value in this car, buy it and actually drive it and use it. Granted, that person's probably 70 or 80 years old. I don't know. I would drive it. If I didn't already have 20 cars, I would absolutely drive the hell out of this car in fact today i'm trying to decide which one which one of the cars i have out here that i want to take home and i've, I've got it tied up between two of them and believe it or not it's not the sea mustang although God, i love that car um don't look at me like that don't don't look at me like that it makes me <laughs> 
I'm tied between this car, and I know you're gonna think I'm absolutely crazy, but I really am tied between taking the Aston Martin home today on those gravel roads or taking that Fleetwood home, and I'm not quite sure which one it's gonna be. If you saw the hood up on the Subi and you're wondering what is going on, well, I'm thinking maybe we should do some video content on this car. Definitely some video content on this car. I think we could put this one back together. I do. I know it's it's kind of rough on the inside. The outside's good. It's got good tires. It runs and drives good. Throw some hubcaps on it. Get all the missing intake pieces from a pull-apart yard or something like that. Get the interior from the same pull-apart yard and put her back together. And, and then send this car down the road. Because this, although it's it's disgusting and it's been through hell, this is a good car. This is a good car. Same thing with the Ford Probe. This one I think we need to we need to get to here very shortly. I'm going to replace both of the doors. I found them uh, used, obviously. You're not going to find used parts for this anymore, or new parts for this anymore. But um, I think we could get a couple doors and then send this down to Mako and have them throw a fresh paint job on it. And it would make this car look almost new again, guys. Um, maybe do a little touch-up on the wheels there. But this car deserves it. She did great making it all the way from Indiana down here. And I had my doubts about this one. But she made it. Um, the Citation, there's a little bit more work to do on it. Nothing much, really, but there's a, just a little bit of work to do. We might as well wrap that up in a video as well and send this one down the road. Um, on the chopping block, probably as soon as I get back, is going to be the, the C-Class, the Celica, and this Cadillac right here, as well as the SEMA Stang, the Jeep, there's probably the tow truck, um, and don't forget, we have a van back here, a handicap van that I know absolutely nothing about. Um, it got dropped off and I just left it sitting here. I'm probably going to, I'm going to try to make a video on this today. Um, I don't know when these videos are going to come out, but for me, it's the 8th and I am flying out with Monkey Wrench Mike tomorrow on the 9th and we're going to Florida to go meet Sam Crack and pick up a Corvette from him. And then we got, a, we got a lot of traveling to do, but this thing got brought down here and I just kind of left it sitting here. Keys are still in the ignition. Ooh, it doesn't smell the best. Yeah. I mean, it's not awful, but it definitely doesn't smell the best. Yeah, she's she's dead as a doornail. But I definitely got to get a video out on this one. This is that handicap van that I was telling you about. It's got this seat with this controller here. I don't know how all this stuff works, guys, but uh, do not operate unless locked in swiveled exiting position. See, I don't know anything about that. But anyway, you got these buttons that I guess turn the chair and then it comes out of the van, like comes way out of the van to help the person get into a wheelchair. So personally, I think that's pretty cool. And then we've got the actual wheelchair lift. Can you believe the, uh, the gas shocks work on this? You got the actual wheelchair lift right here with this button, I guess just up and down strap and then a uh, a foot pedal and then there's the glove box and some other little knickknacks so anyway this video will be coming soon this is a 400 dollar win how bad can you go on 400 dollars um and then uh later today the gentleman that we did the giveaway with this lumina on he is coming up here from texas to claim his free car and i hope it does him well it's not pretty but the damn thing runs and drives really, really well. So hopefully this car will do him some good. So we got a lot of stuff coming, guys. Just stick with me. Stay tuned. I think that's the end of this video.